the right wing response to Joe Biden's speech has varied in terms of what they want to focus on. They eventually settle on a narrative. They started off with some pretty random stuff. Uh, Peter Ducey saying uh, it's unacceptable because Biden urged people to vote, quote, which is a direct political statement. I guess okay, he told people to vote, like presidents always tell people to vote, whatever. Eventually they found something that's gonna hit a little bit harder and that the right can really like chew on for a little bit. And uh, Kaylee McEnany decided to dip her toes in this water, uh, tweeting, standing in front of a hellish red background, Biden called half the country the MAGA Republicans threats and clear and present dangers. Then he says, empathy is the fuel of democracy, the willingness to see each other, not as enemies, but as fellow Americans. Now, of course, as we've already pointed out, he very clearly stated, I am not talking about even most Republicans, but they're gonna ignore that. It's the hellish part that they like, and they're gonna run with that. I mean, we're in the middle of a satanic panic, why wouldn't they do that? Richard Grinnell tweeted, dark blood red background, evil and condescending tone of voice and squinting eyes. Everybody knows there's nothing more threatening than an old man squinting. Uh, negative words and themes, constant condemnation. Of course, he pointed out things that they've accomplished, his hopes for the future. Again, they're moving past that. It's evil and condescending. One Fox guest said that the backdrop was almost satanic. Again, because it was red and because it's red, it's unacceptable. Biden broke with hundreds of years of precedent by having red in the background. No president has ever done it because obviously the only reason you would do that is to appeal to Asmodeus who is ruler of hell <laughs> as he did. But as not notably, uh, Trump didn't do that when he gave this speech with the uh, red background and uh, lasers it looks like or this other big red background. Here he's giving a traditional cultist thumbs up to Beelzebub, I guess. It's hellish and evil, Brett. It's, it's the official color of the Republican Party. It's always in the background, who the hell cares? It's so stupid. Now, here's the thing, if I wanted to read into this, I would I would draw a through line to Biden saying, listen, if you want to come after us, you're gonna need more than an AR-15, you're gonna need an F-16 or whatever. You're gonna need a fighter jet if you want to fight off the American. I just think those those bits of language that, that Biden uses are too far. Having Soldiers in the background. They are appealing simultaneously to the people in the, I think they're trying to appeal to people in the Republican Party who think that that Joe Biden isn't, that you know he's one of those leftists who isn't into the police and the military strength or anything like that. He's trying to, you know, dis, you know, take away that potential argument and seed that's been sown in the minds of Republicans about Democrats by Fox News to last 25 to 30 years. Um, I just don't think he needs it. I think he'd be better served by traditional, like if, he, if they just left the, the light up a little bit in the stairway he came up on you know, with him mm -hmm. and Jill walking toward the lectern. When they could see the American flag in the background, it would have been better. I just think it's an outdoor nighttime speech and, and they've been lit like that before. I think they got a little too artsy fartsy with it. Yeah. But the fact that the Republicans are are taking this image and equating it to what's trending this morning on Twitter, pedo Hitler, when they themselves are quite obviously the fascist equivalent in America now, I think that's yeah. rich. And the only people who really buy into that are folks that wouldn't defect from the MAGA wing anyway. I do get the pedo Hitler thing because I remember when um, you know Biden was going to have a kid and, and he was speculating on live TV about what the kid's breasts would be like someday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait, no, that wasn't Biden. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.